Hey everyone, this is Father Sean with a with a weekly reflection. I realize I haven't been doing this the past couple weeks, kind of slipped my mind, and uh, and thought, well, you know, no time like the presence to get back started. And it's it's Friday the 17th of July today, and today's actually kind of a, a unique feast day. It's not one that's on the universal calendar. It's one that if you if you know it's there, you can celebrate it at Mass. And it's it's the feast day. Of, it goes by a couple different names, of St. Teresa of St. Augustine and her companions, or maybe common, more commonly known as the Martyrs of Compiègne. I think that's how you pronounce it. So basically they were uh, French Carmelites, uh, 16 of them who were in this monastery in the late 1700s. And as the Reign of Terror went through France, so the Reign of Terror is basically when the, the French had their revolution, during the French Revolution, Robespierre kind of you know, orchestrated all of this to, uh, to, to basically persecute the church. You know, so many, so many bishops, priests, religious uh, were, were killed, were imprisoned, were mistreated, all of this. Um, and so these 16 uh, women, St. Teresa of St. Augustine was there, was the, the prior, I believe. She was, she was in charge of the community. So they get, they get, um, they get arrested and they're in prison. And then one day, they, um, they, their prison clothes actually, so they're wearing their prison clothes. Their prison clothes go to the wash and they put on their habits. They're back to their habits. And so it's these, uh, so they're in their habits for the, for the, um, for as they're sentenced to, to death that day. And, and there was some struggle there, right? Like some of the sisters struggled with this, this martyrdom basically that they're asked to do. But uh, St. Teresa of St. Augustine was this great like encourager to witness to their faith. And you can imagine, like, you have to picture this scene because they go by a cart. So they're taken by the cart uh, to, the, uh, to the guillotine. And as they're going there, you know, you can imagine the crowds watching these 16 women, nuns in their Carmelite brown habits, that are, uh, that are going to their death. And the mother, mother uh, Teresa of, of St. Augustine, the, the, the leader, encouraged them all to offer their lives for an end to the reign of terror. She encouraged all, all of them to offer up their suffering, offer up their martyrdom, so that the church may live in greater freedom, so that the church may be able to exist uh, in France. And, and they do. You know, that's the, that becomes their prayer, that they offer their life for the, the end of the reign of terror. And sure enough, four days after these sisters are martyred, you know, St. Teresa of St. Augustine's the last one, last one to go, and she encourages them the whole time. I think they're, they're singing a hymn. It might be the, the Te Deum as they're, as they're going one by one to the guillotine. Just it, You could imagine what this scene would be like, nuns fully habited going to their execution. And so there's this incredible faith. There's this incredible witness. But it's amazing. I think it's four days after their, um, after their execution, after their martyrdom, that the reign of terror ends. Robespierre himself is, is martyred. And are not martyred, is killed, um, and so it's this this great like their sufferings. They offer this up to an end, for an end to the reign of terror, and it happens. It happens. It doesn't happen through violence. It doesn't happen through them fighting back. It doesn't happen for through like political discord or any or discourse or anything like that. The reign of terror ends because these sisters offered up their sufferings to Christ. They offered up their pain. They offered up their death. To Jesus, and that quelled the tear, and that's actually the name of the book that's probably best known about their story. To quell the tear is is basically the story of their life that they're offering their sacrifice ended the reign of tear, and so they're great Carmelite saints. Uh, yesterday we celebrated the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Hopefully everybody has a, a brown scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. But today we have basically the uh, the heavenly birthday of some of the greatest Carmelites, the ones that were existed to quell the terror. So they give us so many great examples. The example of friendship, the example of community, because you think all of these sisters probably couldn't do this on their own. You know, probably couldn't make this offering on their own. But together, and through the grace of a, a great leader of St. Teresa of St. Augustine, they're able to offer their lives. And then also, you know, the, the importance of, of community, the importance of others in our faith. You know, none of us are isolated. And then maybe just the second thing is the bold witness. You know, that's what they give is this witness. And that's what a martyr is. A martyr is a witness. 
uh, to the truth, as a witness to Jesus Christ. And so they, they boldly do that in a way that probably none of us will be asked to do, but praise God for the gift of their life. So we learn from them today. We learn from these great martyrs of Compiègne, of St. Teresa, of St. Augustine, and her companions. Look towards their example and thank God for the gift of the witness of their life. It's Father Sean today for the weekly reflection. Uh, hopefully he'll be back uh, next week. And have a great day and hopefully see you at Mass this weekend.